First law of thermodynamics is generally referred to as the law of conservation of energy, which means that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but it can change forms. It can also be stated that the total amount of energy in a closed system remains constant. There are several ways in which the first law of thermodynamics can be expressed mathematically. The most general expression of the first law would be that the sum of all changes in energy equals zero. The simplest possible expression of this is that the change in energy form 1 plus the change in fo energy form 2 equals zero. In dealing with heat and work, the formula is the change in internal energy equals the heat added to the system minus the work done by the system. In a gravitational field, it is the change in potential energy plus the change in kinetic energy equals zero. In this illustration, the red circles represent energy. Note that you can move the energy around all you want, but the total amount remains the same. The same thing goes for actual energy. You can move it around, change its form, but the amount remains the same. The significance of the first law is that the total amount of energy in the universe is constant, so it is impossible to get more energy out of a system it is put into it. Simply put, you can't get energy from nothing. Furthermore, any system that puts out more energy than is put into it from any source is impossible. To be possible, a system must get energy from some place, even if it is not obvious. This does not mean that you can't get more energy out of a system than you put into it. In classical thermodynamics, free energy is the energy in a system available to do work. However, this is not what this section is about. In this section, free energy refers to a group of devices pledged to put out more energy than the user puts into it. So the question is, does free energy violate the first law of thermodynamics? The answer is no, as long as the free energy device gets energy from someplace. Now it needs to be noted that there are recognized devices that technically qualify as free energy. These include solar cells that get their energy from sunlight. Now most alleged free energy devices seek to tap the universe's zero-point energy. While it may be debatable as to whether or not zero-point energy can be tapped, it does not, in principle, violate the first law of thermodynamics. In conclusion, the first law of thermodynamics simply says that the amount of energy in a closed system remains constant, regardless of how it is changed or moved around. To add energy to a system, it needs to come from someplace else. According to the second law of thermodynamics, heat will spontaneously flow from a hot object to a cold object. The amount of unusual energy in a closed system always increases. It is impossible to turn all of the heat put into a system into work. The basic concept behind the second law of thermodynamics is the fact that heat always spontaneously flows from hot to cold. It never spontaneously flows from cold to hot. When using heat transfer to do work, some of the heat always goes to a colder location. This is called entropy. You can never turn all of the heat into work. Heat can be forced to go from cold to hot by applying work. This also reduces the entropy, and thus work can reduce entropy. This is the basis of air conditioners, refrigerators, and heat pipes. Entropy is the measure of a system's thermal energy unavailable for conversion into mechanical work. It is a measure of the disorder or randomness in a system. It is a measure of the equivalent states or multiplicity of a system. In classical thermodynamics, it is mathematically defined as ds equals dq over t. This results in the change in entropy as delta s equals q over t, where s equals entropy, q equals heat energy, and t equals temperature. In statistical thermodynamics, it is mathematically defined as S equals K natural logarithm of omega. This results in the change in entropy as delta S equals K natural logarithm of omega 2 over omega 1. Entropy is related to disorder through the multiplicity of a system. Disordered states have far more multiplicity than ordered states such that omega d is much, much greater than omega o. This means that entropy d is much, much greater than entropy o. Since the second law of thermodynamics indicates that entropy tends to increase, it also indicates that a system's degree of disorder tends to increase. The only way to increase a system's order, that is, decrease its entropy, is for work to be performed on the system. Abiogenesis is life from non-life by naturalistic means. 
Living things are the most ordered and complex systems known to exist. The simplest known living cell is infinitely more organized and complex than the most organized non-living chemical systems produced in a lab. This means that the entropy of a living cell is orders of magnitude lower than the entropy of the same amount of non-living chemicals. This means that abiogenesis goes against the second law's tendency towards increasing entropy. While entropy can be decreased by applying work to a system, no evidence exists for a naturalistic mechanism for such a large decrease in entropy. Without such a mechanism, the second law of thermodynamics suggests that abiogenesis is impossible. The problem is that while the second law of thermodynamics shows that energy applied to a system can reduce its entropy, it does not deal with how the manner in which energy is applied to a system affects entropy. It does not show the difference between construction work and a bomb. Construction work reduces a system's entropy. Bombs increase a system's entropy. The problem is that the second law does not show the difference. An additional principle is needed to show this difference. This is also needed to really determine if abiogenesis is possible or not. In conclusion, heat spontaneously flows only from hot to cold. It indicates that the disorder of a system tends to increase. It indicates that the disorder of a system can be reduced by applying energy. However, it does not show how the way that energy is applied affects the disorder of a system. The third law of thermodynamics states it has the temperature of a substance approaches absolute zero, its entropy approaches zero. The concept is that because heat is a result of the motion of the molecules in an object, and that this motion causes the molecules to move around and spread out, and this causes a condition of high entropy. As an object is cooled, the object's molecules slow down. This allows the forces between the molecules to organize the molecules such that it absolutely zero all the heat flow and the molecules stop moving. This allows the forces between the molecules to force organize the molecules resulting in zero entropy. Absolute zero is the lowest possible limit on temperature. This temperature is stated as zero Kelvin, which is equivalent to minus 273.15 degrees Celsius, or minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit. The lowest temperature ever achieved was achieved by MIT researchers in 2003. That temperature was 0.45 nanokelvin, which is 45 ten billionths of a kelvin, or 45 ten billionths of a degree Celsius above absolute zero. And here is the same temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit respectively. While absolute zero is the lowest limit on temperature, it is not actually achievable. You can get infinitely close to absolute zero, but not exactly at absolute zero. You just can't get rid of that last bit of 